So, I'm honored to be teaching uh, you God's word, from God's word today. And King David said in the Psalms that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And I pray today that as we encounter God's word, that God's word will bring clarity and insight to all of us seated here and to those watching online in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Great. Thank you very much. So we're in the middle of a conversation titled... Eh, please put your hands together for yourself. I was waiting for you not to know it. <laughs> and it's taken out of our Papa's book titled The Genius of Surrender. If you have not bought this book, I don't know what you are doing with yourself. Like for reals. I don't know what you are doing. It's how much? 20K. That is not even enough for you to go to KFC these days. Yes, it's not enough. Cafe Java's breakfast now is 30,000. It is how much? It's 35. So instead of investing in your stomach and gaining calories, Jesus is not a calorie burner. He's not. Instead, invest in eternity, invest in wisdom and get this book. It will save your life. Amen. How many of you promised to get the book? Today. Eh, you are afraid to put up, put up your hand and commit. You are afraid to put up your hand. <laughs> Those of you who have got it already, well done. Clap for yourself. Great, 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 great. The genius of surrender. And in this conversation, we have all agreed that our human tendency is to try and remain in control of our lives. And because of this, we do everything we can to give the impression that we are in control. But the paradox of this matter is that the only way to life in all its fullness, to the best life that we could ever imagine, is to surrender totally to God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh -uh, you have to give them that corner eye. We learned that this is not called a bombastic eye anymore. It is called the north wind eye. Say, neighbor, it is all about surrender. Uh, if you're not looking at somebody, you are wrong. Look at your neighbor one more time with a side eye. Say, neighbor, it is all about surrender. And we learned last week that surrender was the conversation Jesus had with every individual that he came across. He was confronting their idols and asking them to give up leadership to him. Amen. 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 People, people who are increasing and increasing. Better answer. Amen. Amen. Great, great. So by now, I know you might be asking, how does this surrender thing work? How do I go about this thing called surrender? In the action movies, when a policeman is about to arrest somebody, the suspect, how, what is their posture? Ah, <laughs> please. Hands up. Wonderful. If you, if you don't know, please look at the uh, Apostle Shan. Shanequa. <laughs> yeah. Hands up. Not so. Okay. Now, in rest, people who watch WWF, me, I was a fan when I was growing up, until I discovered it was staged. I got so annoyed. I was like, what? All my childhood gone. When, when they are wrestling on that stage, how does a person give up? How? How do they? Huh? How many? I need to hear it creasing and decreasing. They, they tap out. Okay, great. Now, in war, in battle, when the people who are surrendering, when they want to surrender, what do they do? They clap for yourselves. You have gotten all the answers correct. Uh, you're not clapping for yourself? Eh, you people, learn how to celebrate yourselves in this church. Anyway, so yes. Now, how do you tap out in the issue of surrender? How do you tap out completely to God? That is what we are going to have a conversation around today. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay, so one more time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, three things. Three radical decisions. Great, let's delve in. So Jesus gave his disciples a wonderful and simple guide to surrender. And it is recorded in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 27. Let's turn our Bibles there. If you don't have your Bible, you can look at the screen. 
Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 27. Now, next uh, time, next conversation we'll have next week, we shall give context to this conversation, this scripture. But I want us to zero in on verse 24. Okay? So let's go to verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, together... Hey, assembly, assembly, speakers, one. We go, one, two, go. And Chris says, again, one more time. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever... Great. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word today. We pray, our Father, that even as we have this conversation, that our hearts will be open unto you. Let nothing stand in the way of us getting an encounter and impartation from you today. I surrender myself as a vessel. Use me, O God. Walk in me and through me. And let your name be glorified at the end of this. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So according to this verse... A true disciple of Jesus is someone who makes or takes up these three radical causes of action. And the first one is self-denial. The next is cross-carrying. And finally, Jesus following. So let's get into it. The first one we shall talk about is what? Self-denial. What does it mean to deny yourself? What is this thing called self-denial? Self-denial has to do with letting go of control, releasing control completely to God, allowing Jesus to take the will over your life. It's not about singing that song alone. Jesus, take the will. Nah, it is for action. Self-denial means Every day before I do anything, I am inviting God into that conversation that I'm about to have. I'm inviting God into every activity I'm going to do. I'm saying, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Self-denial means wheresoever I go, it's not about me. It's about Christ at every point in time. Amen. Amen. It means going forward, God must be the one in charge, solely in charge of my life. That everything that I think, do, say, it's all about him. That he's in complete control. Practically, the way to start the journey of self-denial is to make a list. Make a list of all the things in your life that could possibly come in the way of your self-denial. Make a list. What are the things that are really important to you? What are the things that you hold so dear? What are the things that you will struggle with if God asked you to give them up? That is self-denial. Create that list. As you are sitting down there, begin to think about it. And saying, eh, if Jesus asked me for this thing, will I be able to give it up? For those who were at the worship night on Friday, I talked about my precious suitcase. That was one thing that I had to deny, <laughs> self-deny, for Jesus to have his way. And as I found that, that as you create that list of surrender, there are three important areas that you need to think through as you create that list. Are you ready for those three areas? Look at your neighbor and say three areas. The first one is all that you are. All that you are. It means your identity. What is the thing that makes you you? Is it the fact that you are tall? Put it on the list. Is it the fact that all your six pack has entered into one force? Put it on the list. Is it, the, is it your, your qualification? Put it on the list. What, are, what is that thing that people, when people see you, they're like, eh, huh? got you, look at you, put that thing on the list. Because 
these things that are important to you, if you do not begin to think through them and intentionally make a way to surrender it, you cannot self-deny. It will always be in the way. I am a great cook. Put it on the list. I make the best chicken lollipops in town. List. It is going. I am somebody full of wisdom. Put it on the list. You are going to learn how to self-deny in this race of surrender. This journey of surrender. So the first one is all that you are. Your education. Some of you pride yourselves in your education. I am a PhD holder. Do you know me? <laughs> I'm a, how many? Three. Banange, if you, had, if you have three, that means you spent your life in school. Have you seen? I have BSc, Master's, Diploma, PhD. What is the next one? After PhD is what? Eh? Postdoctorate. There's still that one. Banange. I have not even started. It's okay. Let's go back to our conversation. Put it on the list. That's your education. Put it on the list. Your appearance. Your personality. Your ethnicity. Me and Muchiga. That is the way people say it. I didn't say that you say it with anger. I just said you say it with passion. Me and Muchiga. Me and Nigerian. We are like that. It is going on that list. Amen. Your perceptions, put it there. All that you are. Everything. And as you put it on the list, ask the Holy Spirit to show you any area that is still lacking, that you still need to bring to mind. And then you begin to surrender it to God. Amen. Amen. So number two area out of the three. All that I have. All that I have. It means your possessions. Your money. I know as I've said money now, some of you, you have tightened yourself up on your seat. Eh? Your empire has held itself together. Your investments. Because whatever you have, it's for God's purpose and will. He gave it to you. God gave it to you for his purpose and his will to be done. It's a tool. It's not for you to sit on it and glorify yourself in it. All that you have, your house, I know you were there. You, in fact, you were the chief bricklayer. Put it on that list. You worked that money with your hands like this. You built the house. You put the block there. You know the lines, how it falls inside that house. Put it on the list. Because it belongs to God. It's not yours. That's your phone. iPhone 100. Where are we now in the iPhone series, by the way? Eh? Samsung users are the ones shouting, by the way. Samsung, you people are the ones shouting. You are, you are here, jealousy. You are tired. If I tell you to put on your phones now, Samsung will first update before it gets. It's okay. Yes, let's stay in the world. Let's not attack people. <laughs> Even your gadget, it belongs to God. You know why it's difficult for you to post, post sermons and clips from the sermons? Because you are still seeing your gadget as yours. That's your iPhone 100. I'm a, I don't know where it's going. By the way, I'm not an iPhone user, so I will throw shade today. That's your iPhone. You are still seeing it as yours, eh? You wait. <laughs> no, let's not pray those prayers. Let's leave it alone. <laughs> it is for God. It's for him to fulfill his purpose. Every time we are being talked to and told and encouraged, once you are sent to someone, put it on your status. You are still seeing your Instagram status as yours, eh? <laughs> All that you have, it belongs to God to fulfill his purpose. Your networks, your business networks, your friendships, your relationships, that husband, that wife, that boyfriend, that you have been praying for, now they have finally come. 
It is for God. Hey, let me shock you. That chick, you have been praying for that chick. All her calves are in place. She belongs to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And finally, the third part, as you make yourself denialist, all that you hope to be. This one, it is hard. Because all of us have dreams and aspirations here. Some of us want to travel the world. You go round, go round again. And put your name everywhere you go. I was here, I was here. Amala was here. Amala was here. Amala was here. Some of us, is because you grew up in poverty. So you are running away from poverty. You are running. That thing is chasing you. You are running, running, running. Even that's your need for success. Eh? All that you ever hope to be. It goes on that list. You have been waiting to start this business. Now this business has taken off. All that I ever hope to be, it belongs on their list. It is in your list of surrender. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. It means before you were even thought of, before your parents decided to blink at each other, your purpose on this earth was already written somewhere. So those dreams that you are having now, imagine God is aware of it, but he's asking you to surrender it. He's asking you to surrender it. Do you know why he's asking you to surrender it? Because he wants to use it. Because his plan and his purpose is bigger than yours. And where he's taking you to is far bigger than yours. You, you just want money to satisfy your hunger now. But God wants to give you money to satisfy your hunger and other people's hunger. You, you just want to be healed so that you'll be okay, Kawa. But God wants to heal you and use you to heal others. So... Why are you holding on to that, your lollipop of 700? Eh? When there's a bigger deal of 7 million waiting for you. Have you guys seen that meme? It's on Instagram. Eh? Jesus was kneeling to a little girl. He had a big teddy bear behind and he was asking the little girl. We are that little girl, by the way. You have held this tiny thing that is not even up to her. And you are refusing to, to release it. All that you ever hope to be. All that you own. All that you are. Bring it in surrender. Amen. Amen. Hey, Lucas is in the house today. Eh? <laughs> so, all that goes on our self-denial surrender list so that is radical decision number one radical decision number one is what self-denial and as you create that list you think of all that i am which has to do with your identity all that i have which has to do with what your possessions and all that i ever hope to be which has to do with what your dreams and your aspirations so let's go to radical decision number two look at your neighbor and say radical decision number two Hey, all the crises and crazy, they are not talking. Radical decision number two. Great. The next, according to that verse, is cross carrying. Cross what? Carrying. What does it mean to carry your cross? Now, if surrender means to give up your plans and let Christ take control, cross carrying means to embrace God's plans and God's will for your life. That's what it means. If surrender means you are letting go of your own plans, you are allowing God to take control of your life and your plans. Cross-carrying means you are now embracing God's plan for your life. Amen. This one is painful. 
I must warn you. Because when you say, I allow God's plan over my life, I embrace it, it means whether he comes through for me or not, I will still remain faithful. It means no matter how long I pray for that husband to come, and the husband has still not come, I will still remain faithful. It means no matter how hard I pray for the business to break through, and it's not breaking through the way I want it to break through right now, I will still remain faithful. That in everything that I do and say, faithfulness will be the course that I will take. I will not throw a tantrum, because some of you are saying, hey, hey, God is not working. Me, I've gone. I've left this church. I've left this Christianity. Many of you, you, by the way, where are you always running to? Because I don't get it. Yes, you are like, you are like, what is his name? Jonah. You run, the fish will swallow you and come and spit you back here. I've left this discipleship group. I have been praying with them. Their their prayers don't work. Hey! (laughs) Sometimes it's not their prayers not working. It might just be God saying, no, if I give you this thing now, you will become big-headed, so let me first leave you. It means that you will embrace God's will for your life every day, every morning, every single act. You want to throw a tantrum and God says, shut up and sit down. You are not getting angry over that matter. And you swallow and have a kiwaru in your throat. This big, hot mango. You want to fight, but the Holy Spirit has said, no, we are not fighting. You want to just do something radical, and the Holy Spirit says, no. That is not my plan for your life. Carrying your cross, it means that you embrace God's plan every day. Every day. You wake up in the morning, I'm surrendered to you, oh Lord. What is your plan for me? And you listen. And you go at it. Amen. Amen. Now Jesus, when he was going to the cross, you think he didn't have opinions? He did. The Bible says he was human. And he was going to face great pain. So he said, Father, if you will, take this cup, this cup from me. Let this cup pass over me. Because the pain that he was going to face was great. But he said, nonetheless, let your will be done. How many of you will readily do that? Especially for people who you don't know. You will say, for what? Huh? <laughs> hey, beg everybody, come and carry your cross. What is that? Why, 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 why? And because of surrendering himself to God's will at that point, you have faith. You have what we call Christianity. You can pray and your prayers are readily answered because the veil has been opened for you to walk through readily because of Jesus carrying his cross. Now, if he didn't, where would you be? Where would you be? Some of you will still be in the disco this after, afternoon, morning. You will still be there to do do in a very wrong crowd. I think they didn't come. They are here. We are all here, all of us together. We know ourselves. We are here. If Jesus did not surrender himself to the cross, did not carry him his cross, he did not obey the will of the Father. Where would we be? Where would we be? So imagine my takeout is. If God wills it for you, then it is the best thing for you. If God wills it, it is the best thing. No matter how hard you fight and cry and say no, imagine it is still the best thing for you. I'm imagining if Pastor M and Pastor Carol did not carry their cross and follow Jesus. Did not make that radical decision. I don't know if Mavuno, Mavuno will not be, it's not even I don't know, Mavuno won't be here. And we'll all remain ordinary people without fearless influence. Yes, or you'll be fearlessly influencing in the wrong areas. Me, if I didn't carry my cross of marrying my husband, I would be in the village, influencing nobody, being nothing, amounting to nothing. I was telling people in the first service, when my husband came for my hand in marriage, 
Of course, at first, I was like, excuse me, no. But later on, when I understood that this is God's wish for me, I said, okay, let's, let's try it out. And he's not the... You see the way he's looking now? <laughs> as glory has descended. Uh, before, there was no... The glory was far. So even when I took him home, my parents said, <laughs> so we paid school fees for it to end here. Eh, eh, Osai, this is what you want to do with your life. <laughs> our pa, our pa, pa, pastor, hey, <laughs> hey. Even look at him, it doesn't look like he has eaten. My dad talked and talked and talked. The young man will be in the room, they will be talking about him. Not in good terms, by the way. But because I was convinced, I had prayed about it. Imagine the man came to me and told me, me, I don't want a girlfriend, I want a wife. Go and pray about it. I prayed about it and the Lord God told me, yes, that is your husband. So I pulled my mother aside and said, this is the one. In fact, she saw it before me. And I told everybody, if this guy goes, that is it, people, I will not, it is done. This is God's will for my life. It's either you say yes or you say yes. Finally, they agreed. Now look at me, 14 years later. Across the world, preaching, influencing lives. A fearless influencer for real. That is what it takes for you to cross carry. To embrace God's will for your life. That you say, it doesn't look like it right now, but I will move on. I will stick to God's plan. That's what it is. If you had seen us those days, you would think nothing will come out of these ones. My sister was here the other day. And she was in complete awe. She went back with stories. For, hey, hey, you people have to come. Now everybody's making plans. It's like a pilgrimage now to come and see the one who... <laughs> By the way, when they come here, you better be ready to celebrate and show them. <laughs> but that is what it means, my brothers and sisters to cross carry that you completely disregard what it's looking, face value disregard that and just focus and say you know what I have prayed about it, this is, this is God's wish for me, so let me stick to it it might be looking like that business will give you 10 billion but God is saying I am not in that business right now and you, you will keep quiet tuck your tail in between your legs and say it's okay, I will do your will oh God yeah, it's not like you don't know what the other side is but once the Holy Spirit says I'm not there, leave it alone and cross carry carry your cross and follow amen amen look at your neighbor and say neighbor if it's God's will then it's the best thing for you do they look convinced they don't look convinced eh it's okay. We pray that the Holy Spirit will work on this word in your heart. Amen. Amen. You might be afraid to surrender because you are thinking of the pain and the inconvenience or the embarrassment that it will bring. But let me assure you, it only pains at first. After that, you feel nothing. You feel nothing. I was saying it at the worship night. That first attempt to surrender it breaks you hmm? it kills you it's death in itself but once you get up from that place you feel nothing it's not difficult anymore for you to accept god's will you just march on knowing that you know what god's got my back so i can do this amen if it's god's will for your life then it's the best thing david says in psalms 84 verse 10 I would rather scrub floors in the house of my God than be honored as a guest in the palace of sin. David was ready as a king to scrub floors than for him to be there dancing in, in the palace with sinners. He was ready to do God's will for his life. 
That's why even when he danced and his clothes fell off, the guy was not ashamed. He was not embarrassed. That one had surrendered. He had killed shame a long time ago. Some of you to even dance in front here, problem. Let's leave it alone. Let's go to something else. Growing up, I never in my life wanted to be a pastor's wife. Talk more, talk less of a pastor. People who see me, my childhood friends who see me on Facebook, they're like, hey, hey. So that is where you ended. Eh? After all the boast, boast, you have been boasting. Never. Pastors are poor. I can never. Pastors' children are always targeted. Never. Eh? Demons are always in their homes because of the demons they cast out in church. What a shock. Look at me now. Pastor's wife, nicely. Pastor, even. Surrender. Surrender, people. Why are you holding on to your 700 lollipops? Surrender. Leave it alone. Carry your cross. Follow him. Amen. Stop. Let us stop this. The reason why we cannot enjoy fullness, eh? the fullness of God, is because we are still holding tightly to our crosses. Some of you have even wrapped yourself around your cross, your legs, your hands, everything. You have wrapped it and held your cross close to your chest. You have refused to give it up. And God is asking you today, why don't you just surrender it? Pick up your cross, hand it over, and the next thing is to follow him. The next radical decision you can make is to follow him. Jesus following now, when I say to follow Jesus, I don't mean you just be walking behind him like that. To follow Jesus means to live a life of obedience. Hey, yeah. obedience. Some of you are here and say, no, I follow Jesus. But you have not obeyed his, the last command he gave you. Wingily, mic drop. Today, as the thing is touching you, it's also touching me. Eh? I'm coiling on the inside. Obedience. What was the last command he gave us? Let's, let's look at it. Eh? Because we are, he will be here shouting. Jesus commanded me. I love Jesus. Look at it. Matthew 24, verse 18 to 20. That was the last command. That was a great commission he gave us. He said, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, uh huh. Therefore, and do what? Baptizing. And teaching them everything. That is a command. Have you obeyed it? But yet you claim to be a Jesus follower. Are you making disciples? Wait, wait. Before we even go to making, are you even a disciple? Eh, don't shout yes there. There are terms and conditions to this disciple that you are. Are you a disciple? This is what a disciple does. A disciple is like Jesus. When you're a disciple, you are following every step. You are following every move. You are doing everything that you have been asked to do. We have told you to come for 4 30 a.m. prayers. Have you come? Huh? We shall. <laughs> That's what underline shall. That is where the problem is here. We have told you to, in your discipleship group, bring one person to Christ every day. First of all, have you even joined the discipleship group? No. Are you bringing one person to Christ every day? No. Because in your mind, I cannot stand at the street corner and shout, get saved or die in the lakes of fire. But you have colleagues at work who do not know that you're a Jesus follower. When they are also gossiping about the boss, the boss, you also gossip. Mr. Jesus follower, a.k.a. prayer point collector, gossiper. 
When they are doing things, taking bribes and giving bribes, you are also amongst them. How are you following Jesus with that kind of character? You arrive at your family meeting. Chaos. How are you following Jesus with that behavior? How are you a disciple? Everywhere Jesus went, there was peace. There was joy. There was healing. Are you bringing healing to your family when you enter there? Are you bringing transformation to your workspace when you are there? Are you the one conducting morning prayers? Or you are the one also waiting to receive? How are you a Jesus follower? You have not obeyed the last instruction that he gave you. The last instruction was to go into the world and make disciples of all nations. But you, it is difficult for us here to open our mouths and tell somebody about Jesus. Why is it so difficult, by the way? Like, every day I, I, I try to understand that thing. Why is this? Are we so concerned about the way we look and the way people see us that we cannot tell somebody about Jesus? You can't even pray for someone. Pastor M even made it easier for us. said, be a prayer supplier. You even wear the t-shirt, fearless, prayer supplier, but you will not pray for anyone. How are you being a Jesus follower? How are you being obedient? The opposite of obedience is what? Disobedience. Jesus came to end our rebellion. Rebellion is disobedience. So if you have not obeyed, you are still walking in rebellion. You are still walking in disobedience. And the Bible says disobedience is as a sin of witchcraft. So we are here, holy witches and wizards. We have not yet obeyed. You have been an individual with your Jesus. Jesus and me. My God. Who told you that he's yours alone? Who, 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 whatever gave us that impression that Jesus is for us alone? Huh? Whatever gave us that. It's time to let go of those ways. We should stop saying this thing with our mouths and be of action. That is the only way we can shine God's light in the darknesses that we are in. That is the only way the world will see the light. When we are behaving the way the Bible has said it. By the way, the Bible is not an old school book. It's not. It is a manual for our everyday living. That is the only way we can overcome the world. When we obey, we walk in obedience. And guess what? He didn't only say you should become a disciple. He said you should also make disciples of others. So as you are becoming like Jesus, you are teaching someone else to become like Jesus. Guys, it's time to follow Jesus with your words. It's time to follow Jesus with your deeds. It's time to follow Jesus with your, even the thoughts that enter your mind. It's time. Don't come here and be singing, Jesus, you are the one I follow. And then you'll get up from here at the end of the service, dust your butt, and move into the week like nothing happened. Let there be transformation. That's my challenge to everyone today. Be a true Jesus follower. Be a true Jesus follower by walking in obedience. Obey the last command. Go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I am with you even to the ends of the earth. So Jesus is following you around the place waiting for you to obey the command so that he can show power. But you are there holding you have sealed up your mouth. You have refused. One more time, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to be a true follower of Jesus. He said before he left, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. If we claim to love someone, see, we do what they want. Huh? People who are married here, 
<laughs> the reason why this marriage has lasted this long, I believe, somewhere along the line, both of you were speaking each other's love language. Not so. Eh? Jesus' love language is to go and make disciples. That is it. That is it. When you're making disciples, you are speaking, you are, hey, it's like a boyfriend and a, you know that early stages, eh? When it is still very sweet, when you have not yet fought. Yeah, that one. That is love language. When you are making disciples, you are making his business your priority. You are working in obedience. Amen. Amen. Now, for those who are new in Mavuno, the structure we use here to make disciples is called the discipleship group. Amen. In the discipleship group, we are all being talked to every time we meet. We chisel each other. We talk to each other. We, you know, we sharpen each other until we are now looking a little bit like Jesus. And we know that when we live there, we are not only becoming like him, we are looking for others who we shall show how to become like him. This past week, I was privileged to be in the Flood Tide Discipleship Group. Yeah, they put your eyes together for Flood Tide. <laughs> eh, eh, where are they? Ah, okay, their leader is behind there. In Flood Tide Discipleship Group, Two DGs, two discipleship groups were launched this when, in one, one evening. <laughs> Diana and Jeremiah, Jeremiah is going to high school. Diana is now in the Chiwatule area. Huh? Chichintale area, yes. Those are people who have become disciples and are now looking for others to disciple. But you, first of all, your discipleship group has become a clique. You have refused to allow other people to enter. Huh? You people have become special. You love each other. Nobody can come in. You can't even live there to go and disciple others. That's not God's plan for that discipleship group. God's plan is for you people to make disciples of others. So if you people are 10, 15 in your group, you are not yet doing God's wish. You're not yet loving on Jesus. You're not obeying his commandment. And besides, if you are seated here and you do not belong to one, people, I don't know the extent that you will take your disobedience and your rebellion. But it's time. Today I'm willing to call it out. And I'm not looking at faces. If you are not yet in a discipleship group, let me put my head down. <laughs> if you're not yet in a discipleship group, you are walking in disobedience. I'm sorry to say it, but yes, you are. And not only disobedience, rebellion. Because as long as you belong to this family, the call is for you to join a discipleship group. So that you can become like Jesus. You cannot become like Jesus by yourself. You have to be parented. It's like a child. A child needs to be told, don't susu there. Pick up your toys. Move this way. Sit down. Eat. Don't run around. We are all like that in the spirit realm. We are children. And we need people to parent us. And at the same time, we also need to start parenting others. So if you are sitting down here, looking all nice and dandy in your Sunday best, and you are not yet in a discipleship group, you cannot do it alone. In your mind, you want to arrive at heaven perpendicularly by yourself. But guess what? You cannot be by yourself. That is not the way God created it. So go and find yourself a discipleship group and walk in obedience. At least start there. Start there. Let us stop this mayangas, this stubbornness that we keep doing here. It will not profit anyone at the end of the day. You, you think you are hard. No, I have stuck to my guns. <laughs> Wait until Jesus surprises you. Amen. Amen. Follow Jesus and follow him. 
find someone that will parent you. Go and join a discipleship group. Go and join a community where you'll be loved, where you'll be told the truth. We see you here. We don't know how stubborn you are. We don't know if you have bad mouth. We don't know nothing. But if you're in a smaller group, you can be told, eh, Auntie Kathy, that thing that you just said, hey. You'll be called out in the group, a smaller group. Your parents there will call you out. And then, as you grow, because the sign of growth is productivity. Not so. Not so. So as you grow, you start to reproduce and also have your own children. I cannot mother the whole church. I can't. No matter how hard I try. I will love on you. I will call you if I have your number. I will do everything that is within my power. You wake me up at 12 a.m., I will pray with you. You ask me to come, but there is a limit. There is a limit I can go. But when you plug yourself in on the, a discipleship group, in a discipleship group, they can solve every little scratch, each, whatever it is that you are facing. And then when you grow up, you start to have others. You start to have your own children, other disciples. So follow Jesus. Follow him with your heart. Follow him in obedience. Follow him in obedience. Obedience is the key, people. Let's stop this disobedient spirit. Let, hold it. Stop it. Stop it. People want to blame COVID for everything. No, it's your heart. Oh, you know, since COVID, may I stop going to church? <laughs> it's your heart posture. I prefer to do online church. It's your heart posture. COVID has nothing to do with it. <laughs> Me, I now give to... <laughs> I give to Steve Fatik. I give to Mike Todd. That was what COVID taught me that the world is, is a global village. My friend, you are working in disobedience. Just allow those English, Luzungu that you are speaking, leave it alone. No, me, you know, I know that I'm a Christian and I have my own individual work with God. <laughs> the Bible says, do not forget the fellowship of your brethren. So you and your individual work, when something happens to you, when the devil caves you in, who is coming for you? The online church, eh? They will come. All 15 of you on the online church. Follow Jesus in obedience. Obedience is the key. It's the key. In conclusion, surrender means that you give, that your entire life becomes about following Jesus and aligning yourself to his priorities and his priority is for us to become disciples who are making other disciples that is his love language so today I'm asking you will you deny yourself will you take up your cross will you follow him will you follow him in deed will you follow him in character Will you follow him with your thoughts? Will you wake up every morning determined to live a life that is completely surrendered to him? You cannot have the fullness of life. You cannot even arrive in some certain places when you have not surrendered. The fullness that God wants for you because his plans are best. The things that he has in stock for you, you can't achieve it if you are not surrendered. Because your hands are like this. You have not yet opened it up. The only way you, something can enter into your hand is if you open it. Not so. Eh? But some of us, we are, we are like this. I was saying that at the worship night, 
you have become a leper. Your fingers are falling off. You have refused. You are just like the whole time. God is trying to open your finger one after the other so that he can put something in there. But you, you have jammed. You are like this. What will it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lost his soul? What? After all said and done, what would you have achieved? Huh? You would have been the, what, the biggest business mogul in town. Eh? That's what you want to be known for. That is it. When God has more for you. Hmm? You want to be that one that everybody's talking about. Hmm, this chick, eh? her fashion sense. When he has more in stock for you to do with that, your fashion sense. What would you have achieved with it? I want you to do a, a, a soul search today. Let's do a soul search. If we are following Jesus, we follow. If we are following him, we follow. Matthew 16, 24 to 25 says, For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Losing life is not an easy task. But it is necessary. It is important for where God wants to take us. Dying daily, surrendering, is painful. But it is important, it is necessary for where God wants to take us. So what is yours? Are you willing to lose your life today? Are you willing to open your hands and let him have it? Are you willing to follow him in your workplace? Are you willing to follow him with your business? Are you willing to follow him with your words? What is it going to be, people? Because the only way to get the best life that God wants for you is for you to be surrendered. Let's just bow our heads and just begin to do a soul search. Begin to do a soul search. Say, Holy Spirit, reveal to me if there's still any area that I have held on to. Maybe I don't know it. Or maybe I know it. I want to surrender it today. Jesus, you're the one I follow. I give you my today, tomorrow. Forever, Lord, I promise to take my cross and follow you you say it jesus you're the one i follow I give you today I give you my today tomorrow forever lord forever lord i promise to take my cross and follow Sing, you. jesus you're the Take 
posture of surrender will be. If your posture is to kneel down, you better find your, yourself a space right now and kneel. If your posture is to stand up with your hand in the air, you better find yourself right now up on your feet with your hands in the air. If your posture is to cry out to him, why don't you just cry out to him? Wherever you are, do not assume the same posture you came in with. Let your hearts be turned around right now. If you need to cry out, cry out to him. It's you and him in this place right now. Assume your posture of surrender. If your hands are going to be lifted up, let them be lifted up. Have no shame, have no fear. Surrender to him because it's only him that can fulfill your heart's desire. your altar right now I'm finding freedom right now freedom from anxiety freedom from stress and worries over what tomorrow will be freedom oh God freedom from my mind I've been thinking and worrying and grasping for life but now I release my life to you oh God I release my life to you oh God hey have your way that part alone. Say, be a fool. Be a fool. To gain the world. To gain the world. And lose, lose my soul. soul. I, I choose, choose you. you. I make that decision today. Only you. One more time. Sing, be a fool. Yes. Be Jesus, for 
every broken heart here today, Lord. Father, we pray for the rejected, Lord. We pray that, Lord, you bring down that spirit of rejection in our lives, Lord. We have been wounded from rejection, Lord. We have been rejected by our fathers, by our mothers, by our brothers and our sisters, by our friends, by our family, by our workmates, Lord. Father, we pull down that spirit of rejection from everyone's life right now in the name of Jesus. Your word says, Lord, that you came to give life. You said you came to give life and give it abundantly, Lord. Your word says that you redeemed us from death to life. Father, I speak life to every dream that was meant to come to life. Father, I speak life to every prophet and every apostle and every missionary in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I speak life to every alcoholic and every depressed spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pull you down in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, you bring life to the sick. Father, I speak to those who have eggs in their bodies, oh Lord, to those who have vitiligo and those who have depression. Lord, I speak life to the brokenhearted, to those without children, without husbands, to those who are broken in heart, oh Lord. For every broken heart here, Lord, we pray that you will remove that spirit of woundedness, oh Lord. Father, may you heal our spirits right now in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, may you bring back your love, your love, the first love, that I will love the Lord thy God with all my heart, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Lord, will you bring life to every dead area of their lives in the name of Jesus. We speak life over the dead. We speak healing over the sick. We pray, Lord, that we will be free in the name of Jesus, that every spirit that oppresses us, I bring you down in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Depression, you come down. Poverty come down, sickness come down. Father, I pray that every lying spirit be released from these bodies in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Father, remove anger from their hearts, O oh Lord. Father, let the spirit of the Lord take over. May the spirit of the light overwhelm our bodies. That our temples of worship will come alive. Lord, let their minds come alive. Let their bodies come alive. Let the spirit of God come alive right now, Lord. May you pour out your spirit in you say in those days I will pour out my spirit young men will dream dreams and old men will see visions. Let them, them come alive right now. Let every deed, every deed, every deed that was dead be brought to life right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we speak that these men will be faithful to you, Lord. That they will see nothing but the Lord Jesus Christ. That they will put their cross before them, Lord, and they will say, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Father, let us keep our eyes and our gaze on the things above that bring life, oh Lord. Father, your word says, oh Obedience is better than sacrifice, Lord. That we will choose you in the midst of everything, Lord. Father, we pray that every door that has been locked will lose you in the name of Jesus. May the riches of his grace come here, Lord. Father, your word said, let the kingdom of God come. Father, let the will be done. Father, let the kingdom of God come down that they will be here, Lord. Your kingdom will be here on earth, oh Lord. Let the children and the sons of God come alive. Let them look after their families in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you will bring life to our souls, that our souls will have Christ, that we will dare to be like Christ. Father, we pray for that young, our young men and our young women will not be captivated by the things of this world. That the system of the Lord will come secondary, Lord, because your men and women will rise up. Father, let them rise up and take the positions, oh Lord. Rise up, my children of God. Let the ship fall be opened and go and make disciples of all nations, oh Lord. Father, we pray that these women will have gentle and quiet spirits, that we will be like Abigail, wise while we are young, oh Lord. That, Father, you will tame our tongues and we will bless and not curse. Father, we pray that where there has been wretchedness, Lord, give us discernment to know right from wrong. Father, I pray that every home right now will know the name Jesus. Father, that our children will grow up and be trained in the way of our Lord. And as they grow, Lord, they will not depart from you. Father, we pray for the leadership of this nation. That your government of heaven, your kingdom will come into this nation, Lord. That our leaders will bow down to the name of Jesus. That every knee and every tongue shall confess you as Lord. Father, we pray that our women in governance, oh Lord. That our women in schools, that our women will be mothers of this nation, oh Lord. Father, we pray that where we've been wounded, Lord, pour out your healing, Lord. 
touch that part, Lord. Where there is sickness, Lord, touch it. Father, your word says, ask me anything in my name and I will do it for you, Lord. Father, I ask for healing right now, Lord. Let the children know that you are healer, that Lord, what you did for Abraham, what you did for Isaac, and what you did for Jacob, that these are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that your inheritance will be in their homes, oh Lord, that they will walk in the way of the Lord, that the word of God will be a word unto their feet, oh Lord, a light unto their path, oh God. Let your word come alive, Lord, right now, Lord. We speak healing for all those who have back aches, you're healed in the name of Jesus. For those who have suffered with skin disorders, in the name of Jesus, may you be healed right now. Father, we speak for those with depression, may the praise of the Lord come upon your life and let every heaviness be brought down in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that those who have suffered under sickness right now, Lord, you are healing them right now, Lord. And Lord, those who have lacked May the Lord open his floodgates of abundance into your life. That you will be disciples who give unto the Lord. And you will reap. He says that those who walk in obedience, they shall eat the good of the land. Those who are willing and obedient, Lord, let them eat the good of this land, oh Lord. That even when they come, Lord, they will go because you have given to them, Lord. Replenish our strength, Lord. And increase our faith and wisdom, Lord. Increase our faith, Lord. Let us walk in the faith of our Lord. Let us walk in the faith of our Lord. Let the word of God come like a double-edged sword and pierce through us, Lord, cutting through bone and marrow that it will not leave us empty, Lord. Father, let your way be my way. Let your way be their way. You will be our God and we will be your people, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, do not return without us, oh Lord. Jesus Christ, you are a king and our savior and our Lord of lords and we will be redeemed from death. We are redeemed from death to life. We are redeemed from death to life. We have been redeemed from death to life. We are redeemed from death to life. Oh Lord Jesus, increase our faith, oh Lord. Increase our faith, oh Lord. Those who are willing and obedient, they shall eat the good of this land. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Children of God, obedience is better than sacrifice. Do us unto the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your strength. Love the God with all your heart, with all your mind and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with your mind and with your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with your mind and with your strength. In Jesus' name. No time is fast spent, but I just feel the Lord laying in my heart. If there's someone here and you honestly do not even know the half of what we are talking about, like you don't know Jesus on a personal level, and you are listening to us talking about surrender, and you're even wondering what is this whole thing about? Surrender is simple, it's just giving God your life asking him to take control and living by his will and ordinances for your life you might be scared you might be worried and thinking what that would mean for you but if you are here you have not yet accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior he's calling you home today you will not enjoy the fullness of the life that you are searching for until you find your place in his will. So if you are here and you do not yet know him on a personal level, I want to invite you to a place of surrender right now. So wherever you are, you can put up your hand wherever you are and I will see you. With all heads bowed, eyes closed. If you do not yet know Jesus and today you want to make a commitment to following him you want to make a commitment you want to accept him as your Lord and Savior you want to surrender your life in its entirety to him just lift up your hands I will see you wherever you are 
Is there anyone here? We might be here singing this song and you are here also singing, but deep down inside your heart, you are wondering what this all means. Just lift up your hand wherever you are, all heads bowed and eyes closed. You want to make a commitment to follow Jesus. It's not difficult. Don't listen to the voices telling you you'll be embarrassed. You will be put to shame. It's not difficult. It's just making a decision and saying, Lord, this is my life. Take it. If you are online, you can reach us on the family line. But if you are here, you can just put up your hand. Are you here? Okay. Come on, just celebrate the Lord God. Celebrate Him. Let me assume that everyone here knows Jesus. And lastly, if you are still asking God for grace to surrender, grace, you are looking at that one particular thing and you are saying, Lord, this one is hard to give up. The last time I made a decision of surrender, it was painful for me. So this one, I need your grace. If you are there, just lift up your hand. If you are asking God for grace to surrender. This one is not a thing of shame. In fact, make a, a bold move, rise up on your feet and come in front. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The last time you tried to surrender, it was painful for you. It was hard. And here you are again and God is nudging you in this same direction. It means he really wants it. It means he really wants it. Just lift up your hands as a sign of surrender. This is me. Begin to pray. Say, Lord, this is me. This is my sign of surrender. Once I put my hand down, I am not picking up this thing anymore. I am laying it at the foot of the cross. Don't worry if you have to cry. Cry it out. This is where you are leaving it. It's not going back with you. And trust me, the moment you let it go and you release it into God's hands, He will take charge of it. He will take control of it. And things will begin to change concerning you. Lift up that hand. Don't be ashamed. Pray. Pray, 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 pray. If you want to fall to your knees in tears, it's okay. It's you in front of God right now. You are saying, Lord, this is me releasing at the foot of the cross. And I'm not going back home with this matter. I am not picking it up anymore. I have released it to you. Give me the grace not to pick it up. Give me the strength not to go after my own will concerning this matter. Give me the strength not to pick up and throw a tantrum when I think you're not going coming through for me. Come on, come on, let it go, let it go, let it go. Release it. Release it at the foot of the cross. Imagine the angels are here right now, taking it, picking it up, seeing your sign of surrender. They are picking it up and they are going back to heaven with it. So release it, release it, release it, release it. It's okay to cry. It's okay. You are in the presence of the Father. And he's here with his arms wide open unto you. Release it, release it, release it. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Because this is not the best he wants for you. You have not even scratched the surface yet. You have not even scratched it yet. So now if he's asking you for it, it means he wants to do a great thing in your life. So release it, release it, release it, release it. The Lord is here. Release it, release it. Is it your business? Release it. Your marriage, release it. Your mind, release it. Release it right now. Release it right now. Father, that you will look upon this one, so God. Look upon this one's Abba Father. See their hearts of surrender broken before you, oh God. Father, will you do a new thing? Do a new thing, Lord God, in the midst of your people. Move mightily, oh God. May they experience you. May they experience the result of this surrender, oh God. May they experience, oh God, the result of this surrender, Abba Father. As they release themselves unto you right now, will you take your rightful place, oh God? Take your
their rightful place, oh God. Whatsoever it is in their businesses, oh God. In their minds, in their marriages, oh God. In their families right now. Take your rightful place, oh God. Take your rightful place and let your will be done. Take your rightful place, oh God. Let your will be done. And even as your will is done, oh God, may your kingdom come right now. And Father in heaven, as their hearts have been broken before you, may you mend, move into action right now. Mend every broken heart right now. Mend every broken heart that is before you, oh God. Give them a reassurance of life. Give them a reassurance of your will. As they step out in obedience, Abba Father. As they step out to obey that which you are calling them to. May they experience you supernaturally this week. May they experience you supernaturally this week. And Lord Jesus, give them the boldness, the strength to embrace your will concerning their lives. That even if you don't come through the way you want to come, the way they want you to come through, but they will remain faithful to you. They will remain faithful to your path, oh God. Father in heaven, that this once, oh God, even as they experience this loss and this release, Abba Father, may they experience you in the name of Jesus. May you comfort them, oh God. May you comfort them and overwhelm them with your love. May you comfort them and let them know that it is well, that as they step out, oh God, in obedience, that your will, oh God, will prevail concerning them, that your will will be done concerning their lives, oh God. Mighty Father, in every area of their lives, oh, Father, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Father, as these hearts have been broken before you, let your will be done. And let your kingdom come. Give them the grace to push on through. Give them the grace to move on. Give them the grace, oh God, as they release themselves to you. Give them the grace, oh God, to move, Lord God, into this week, knowing that you are there for them. In the name of Jesus. Sing, Jesus, you're the one. Jesus, you're the one. Say it with your heart. Say it like you mean it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you are doing in our midst today. Lord, we thank you. This is not in my preparation. It is God, and he's moving swiftly into action. As you have surrendered and given yourself over, he's moving into it. Amen. Amen. As you leave this place and go back to your seat, you are not taking whatever you have left here. It belongs to God now. Be determined when you wake up tomorrow morning. I will not think about it because I have handed it over. Amen. I will not think about it because I have handed it over. Amen. May the Lord be praised in your life. I am waiting for the testimonies that will come out of this. I'm waiting. And there will surely be testimonies. Come on, give the Lord God a shout of praise and celebrate Him. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. You may go back to your seats. Giving up my freedom. I find freedom. Free to follow you. Laying down my idols. I surrender. I may fall in you. This is what Jesus does. When you open your heart to him, this is what he does. You people, I dare you. Your lives have changed forever. It has changed. There's no going back from here. No going back. No going back. If the devil tries to whisper it, you say, no. Me, I have taken up my cross. I have denied myself and I'm following, so I'm not thinking of it. Amen. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. I pronounce a blessing over you. And as you go out into this week, may you experience the fruit of surrender. 
May you rejoice in the Lord as a result of your surrender. May he overwhelm you with so much peace and so much gladness of heart that it will overflow to the people around you. May you experience so much grace, peace of mind, love, joy everlasting, even in difficult situations that people around you will say, I want to know the God that you serve. Even as you have brought those things to him and laid it at his feet, may you know, may he reassure you daily that he has taken it and he's taking control over it. I bless you people in your going out and in your coming in this week, you will enjoy God. The work of your hand is blessed, you will be fruitful. In your studies, you are blessed, you are fruitful. In your going out and coming in, you're lying down and waking up, you are blessed and fruitful. Even your children, they will be fruitful in their school. They will be fruitful in everything they do. In the name of Jesus, celebrate God and say, share the words of the grace with your neighbor. Say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. One more time, give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Hey. Okay, while you are still tarrying, we can watch the next song release. You can give us a song Alright, get your space! Get your space! Get your space! Alright, get your space, let's go! My Jesus power, super power, all of the power, powerless. My Jesus power, super power, all of the power. Powerless. My Jesus. My Jesus power. Super power.